Hello everyone, I'm Dr. David Dobrikowski. I'm an Associate Professor of Supply Chain Management here at the Walton College of Business, where I also serve as Director of the Masters of Science Program in Supply Chain Management. I want to just take a few minutes today and marry two very important concepts uh, for supply chain leaders uh, and managers. And that's the concepts of uh, strategy uh, for the supply chain and then ultimately those competitive dimensions uh, that we spoke of in the past. You know, in other words, how firms compete. So you probably recall that uh, we said that four primary dimensions of competition include price, quality, delivery, and finally, flexibility. Within this, we said, well, wait, there are different dimensions or different types of uh, quality and delivery and flexibility and so forth, right? Price is fairly straightforward. Right? Uh, it's either high or, or low price. Well, how about quality uh, for a minute? Right? With quality, we have what we call process quality. In other words, how reliably the product is produced. That's like Six Sigma quality. Or design quality. And design quality has to do more with the features. Does this product have a lot of features or very few features? In terms of delivery, we have speed or quickness of the delivery. How fast can we get our material if we're manufacturing, or how quickly can we uh, get new product uh, into our retail outlet? Uh, as well as reliability, right? So how reliable uh, is the delivery? In other words, if we order a product and we're expecting you know, it to arrive on our doorstep in two days, does it arrive in two days, or does it come in one day, or four days, and so forth and so on. And then finally, flexibility. There are also two types of flexibility. And those types of flexibility are volume flexibility, in other words, the ability to flex the amount of a product that I provide my customers, as well as variety. All right, so that's a quick snapshot of the four competitive dimensions. <clears throat> then we talked about two different supply chain strategies. We talked about efficient supply chain strategies uh, that are in alignment with low-cost leadership strategies uh, that uh, organizations have. These tend to have functional products, right? Um, with low contribution margins, low forecasting error, very stable types of environments, uh, and so forth. And then we have what we call agile supply chain strategies, which tend to deliver on more innovative products. This is a much less innovative. This is a much less predictable type of environment um, with higher forecasting error, uh, higher contribution margins per unit, uh, which is, can be good, shorter uh, product life cycles, and much faster paced uh, kind of environment. Well, I want to bring these two concepts together because uh, they have critical importance for how we operate the supply chain or specifically how we ultimately select suppliers, right? So let's think about it for a minute. <clears throat> if I'm running an efficient supply chain with a functional product, cost is very important to me, right? So from a price perspective, uh, an efficient supply chain is going to place a uh, high degree of importance high degree of importance uh, on price uh, or cost, right? <clears throat> but an agile supply chain that's very interested in innovation, supporting those short product life uh, cycles, driving uh, you know, increases in contribution margin per unit, dealing with suppliers that can you know, operate in a chaotic environment where uh, you know, forecasting error is high and it's unpredictable, uh, they're probably going to face a little bit of a of a price, uh, you know, trade-off, right? So, uh, from a perspective of running an agile firm, um, price probably won't carry the day in terms of being the most effective uh, or important, I should say, uh, dimension. Uh, how about quality? If I'm writing my RFP for a new vendor or a new supplier, what role is quality going to play? Well, again, if I'm running an efficient supply chain, wow, process quality is going to be very, very important to me, right? Why? Because I can't afford. Uh, to have quality problems. I can't afford, you know, to have a lot of scrap material uh, and so forth and so on. So I need a very reliable uh, process quality or, uh, you know, a, a very high CPK uh, type of ratio or Six Sigma type of uh, performance, right? Um, but design quality to an efficient supply chain, because we offer, you know, low variety and pro long product lifestyles, cycles, excuse me, um, an efficient supply chain is probably less interested in design quality. We don't, you know, back to, uh, you know, our, our Black & Decker drill example. We don't have, you know, uh, radical uh, 
and uh, you know frequent innovations in our product. We don't offer a wide variety of products. So design quality is only important to the extent that it promotes reliability and uh, lends itself well to manufacturability or process quality. Now, from an agile perspective, of course, I would always like to have um, you know high process quality, but it's not going to be nearly as important to me as design quality, right? Why? Because I am focused on innovation. I am focused on providing highly customized products. I'm focused on providing customers with uh, products that they think are cool and, and innovative. So I need to select a supplier that has high design capabilities. I mean, heck, think about Apple for a moment, right? What does Apple manufacture? Nothing. Nothing at all, right? They are a design and an innovation company. They actually outsource uh, manufacturing, right, uh, of their iPhones, Foxconn, right? So design, very important, right, to agile, less important to uh, efficient. How about speed? Uh, how about speed? Um, well, I would submit to you that for an efficient supply chain, speed is not always all that important, all things considered. What is important is reliability, right, is reliability. In other words, you know, think about the, the uh, Fiat Chrysler supply chain for the Jeep Wranglers, right? Uh, if I'm manufacturing uh, in batch sizes of one and I'm trying to maintain, you know, low costs, uh, I can't afford a late delivery, right? If, uh, if I get a late delivery of instrument panels, it might shut down my entire uh, manufacturing or, excuse me, my assembly uh, facility. So reliable delivery, probably more important even than, than quick delivery. But to an agile company, oh, speed is everything, right? Speed is absolutely everything. Um, we want to be responsive to our customers. Uh, we want to have, uh, even from the perspective of more strategically new product development, um, we're very interested in, in speed to the point that we will actually sacrifice uh, some reliability, right? Um, we, why? Because think about it. Uh, you know, an innovative company with high contribution margins per unit has high customer loyalty, doesn't compete based on price. My customer, if I have a stock out, might just wait for my product, right? How about flexibility? <clears throat> well, from a volume flexibility perspective, what did we say about efficient supply chains? Efficient supply chains tend to work in a stable environment, low forecasting error, error, error very predictable, right? So as such, my um, interest in volume flexibility tends to not be really all that great because my environment doesn't demand it. My demand fluctuations are minor. They're not an innovative product where demand fluctuations are dramatic, right? Um, and of course, from a, a variety perspective, I offer a low variety of products, so I don't need much in the way of flexibility if I'm running a functional product with an efficient supply chain strategy as well. On the other side of things, though, because agile firms operate in such a volatile environment with high forecasting errors and so forth, having the suppliers that can, uh, you know, flex with me and provide, you know, more or less product based on my uh, demand patterns, uh, folks that can respond in, in, you know, near real time um, with spatial analytics and so forth uh, can be very important. And of course, variety, um, very important to an agile supply chain um, as they, you know, attempt to deliver on their uh, customers' needs, right? A wide variety of customers' needs. So this is just a little bit of mapping. When we think about the implications of our product type, our business strategy, our supply chain strategy, and how ultimately it influences uh, the way that we would, say, go about selecting suppliers or even writing a request for proposal for, uh, you know, a vendor or a supplier, it has some very, I think, important implications. I think it's easy to fall into the trap where we think, well, all of these things are important. We're not going to sacrifice on any of these things. And I certainly would never select a higher priced or a higher cost supplier. But the reality is there are environments where we face trade-offs and we have to make these decisions in alignment um, with, our, uh, with our strategy. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, you know, brief video to you know, really draw a, a string around the ideas of supply chain strategy, the competitive dimensions that uh, we operate within uh, our marketplace, and ultimately how these two marry to uh, make decision, influence our decision making as supply chain leaders and managers. Thank you. I can hardly wait to see you again. And whoop pig suey. <laughs>